Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome back to Geopolitical Simulator 4. We are still the Cuban Democratic Rebellion, and it is still the 19th of March. So let's continue and see if we can actually shed some blood of the regime today. I definitely want to uh, at least raid some banks and some museums and see what we can make with that money. Just want to turn the music down a little bit. I'm using the Tropico 3 and 4 soundtrack today. And yes, uh, let's see, what can we do? Uh, actually, also, I just want to see something that I thought about when I was editing the previous video. Can we see the satellites here, maybe? under equipment and communication only TV satellites so not the spy satellites the other thing is also we can see uh, the number of our current sympathizers all I have to do is click on my portrait and click on the flag of our organization here so there we go we have 4.6 million sympathizers I'm not sure if that's more than we started off with but it's roughly the same, but we can follow this uh, every few months and see if it changes. Uh, there is another thing happening, just pause quickly, if you can, thank you, uh, close this. Number of mercenaries, number of followers, so at least we're going in the right direction now. Let me just also have a look here, we're not quite at our rocket uh, objective yet but we are at the mercenary objective so let's double that again to eight and of course it will get more expensive each time so Juan Bravo wants to uh, introduce a law on VAT here I'm not sure what the law is it would be nice to see this because that would help us to stir up uh, revolutions or at least uh, protests uh, with other organizations if we knew how they might be affected but this I don't know if this has shown yet we know this uh, happened in the last episode where he had this huge jump in popularity so let's see how the VAT law affects him and let's set up some more meetings now of course in time it's going to become more and more difficult to remember who we met already especially since we don't see any relationship information but I know we haven't met with the Niger Democratic Movement's leader so let's schedule that for tomorrow morning and right after I want to meet with the Peruvian Union of the Democratic Rights President just see is there another one that we know we haven't met before Ecuador I don't think we've met the Ecuador people yet so I'll do that the Colombian I think we have because I remember saying they would like coffee so that probably brings us up to speed there so anyone else foreign networks of course this is the same information in the new contacts button there let's just see in terms of the Cuban groups is there anyone who likes us more now just having a look okay there's one the ecologists we haven't met with them before it's interesting because you would think they might like uh, Castro but now again I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting my games confused here because I don't remember for sure now if he had something to do with the deforestation tax in the last episode or if that was me playing Afghanistan last night I think that was me playing Afghanistan last night never mind let's meet with this guy there we go all right continue so yes, I'm, I'm trying different experiments, you know, just to see different aspects of this game because you can have totally different experiences if you play Canada, for example, or one of the European countries versus uh, the opposition uh, or the rebels like we're doing or even the government of Afghanistan because that is a difficult challenge. So it's very interesting. This game has many different personalities you can almost think of it like that right so hamza el kamak take a coffee no thanks okay uh champagne 
think it's reasonable? You know, I'm in such dire straits. He's at rock bottom, so he doesn't want that. Will he put us into contact with a person from Equatorial Guinea? No problem. I intended to do that anyway. Uh, will you find us? Actually, let's have a look. Of course, I can't see if he likes us at the moment. He is possibly susceptible to a bribe, but it's not at either extreme, so I don't know if he'll go for that. And then we'll just be getting our money back if I ask him to fund us. So, should I try it though? Let's ask if he'll take a bribe. Okay, so he will. At 68, we know they will accept the bribe. <clears throat> now, what are we going to give him? Uh, my usual number is a million bucks, but that might be a bit too much now. Let's give him 500,000 and see if he will give us more in return. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Rest assured, I won't forget this small gesture. Usually they say small gesture, but I have seen a message where they'll say, no, this is too much, I'll only take part of it. But this is still great, so that's hitting the mark just right. Will you fund us now? No problem. I wasn't planning to, but I'll do anything to make you happy. Oh, we'll do anything to make me happy. Are you sure? Anything? Give us weapons too then, please. Uh, but this is good, so we persuaded him to give us money, so hopefully we'll get back more than half a million. But I guess how it works is we give him half a million in his pocket, and then he's, he persuades his organization to give us whatever money he'll give us. So, I guess that makes sense, otherwise he'd just be giving us our money back. Right, next meeting. So, this is the Union of the Democratic Rights President. If I just click there, we can't see any organization information, only the Peruvian flag there. So, this is an official person. Will you take coffee? Sure. Will you uh, take a compliment? Try that with someone else. You've never set foot there. You've never set foot there, so she's not really receptive to that. Will you take champagne? I'd be happy to. That's what that always makes them happy, mostly. Again, we don't see relationship information. Will you put us into contact with a Brazilian movement? No problem. Fantastic. And will you actually know before we do anything else? Let's see if she is susceptible to bribery. Oh yes, very much so. So maybe again this is something wise to do. We can imagine we've asked around, will Marina Chilata accept bribes? And they said yes. Half a million. Great, so will you fund us now? I wasn't planning to, but I'll do anything to make you happy. Fantastic. Great, so hopefully we'll be making some returns there. We mustn't be scared to engage in bribery and all sorts of activities. Sonia Zudez from Ecuador, will you take a coffee? Sure. Will you take a compliment? And you're right. It is Next time visit my summer residence. You know, I might have to take you up on that. Will you take some champagne? Oh, that's... And will you put us into contact with a Paraguayan movement? No problem. And let's just have a look again. Her moral character is 43. I think that's too low. She'll say she's not totally sure if she should take a bribe, so I won't bother. But will you fund us? You yeah. see, she's not really in the mood for that. Alright. And the ecologist group. So let's just have a look. He likes us a little bit at the moment. So a coffee. No thanks. My ulcer can't take it. That's unfortunate. Your militants can be proud of you. Honestly, I'm not very fond of compliments. I hear so many of them that in the long run they become excessive. Okay, will you take some champagne? I'd be happy to. And now, let's just say he's radiant. Yes, I know. I get that all the time. 
Does he like us more? Yes, I think he's gone up. There are various levels of like and dislike. So I think this is the second level. And bribery, do you think we should do that? I'm not sure. 50 is anyway, it's right in the middle, so he won't take it and there's no need to. We just keep him in mind for our next uprising. Next day. And some things are happening. So now we see if we got any money out of our bribes. This illegal organization. 1.73 million. So we made a nice profit on that one. And the other one. A great show of support. 3.07 million. Fantastic. We're making a profit by bribing the officials. Good. Now, let's see. Are there any other meetings lined up? No. Okay, so we've gone through all of them. Newspaper. Uh, just international stuff. Not relevant to us. Right. Are we going on a raid, comrades? Actually, I think let's skip it a little bit. At least to the end of the month. Just a bit more. Let some time pass, you know. It's only been three months so far. Let's just read the paper again. Conflict in Syria. Nothing relevant to us. And his popularity is starting to fall again. Okay, stop. I'll read the paper before the new one is released. New astronaut not relevant to us. And the same, the same. Alright, let's see why his popularity is dropping now. Budgetary decision proposed legislation. So he's making some wrong moves again, which is good. But I doubt people will protest with a 76% popularity. Can we see how many people are fans of the Communist Party? 7.4 million. Still way more than ours. Quarterly employment figures. Unemployment rate dropped to 1%. Good grief. In the US it's 4 now in the game. That's very good, so uh, we can't critique him on that front. I think let's go to the end of April. Then we'll start a rebellion. At least just to raid the banks. And there is a thing you see now. I bet he's increasing that. This has to do with surveillance cameras in the country. It doesn't tell us what again, but I am sure he is increasing the surveillance cameras. Because of all the protests. Yes, it might make it more difficult for us as well. Mm, moon programs. Nothing relevant to us right now. Right, so close this and continue. You know, sometimes in real life it does feel like time is passing this fast. It's very strange, and also the older you get, the faster time passes. It's very true. Okay, it's Saturday. Let's read the paper. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope successful liftoff. So that finally happened in May 2019, but I think in the real world this will take a little longer. Right, it's May. It's May. It's uh, the month of the workers. Uh, oops, I didn't see what the bill was now. Oh, law and real estate tax. And his popularity was dropping even further, so I'm sure he's increasing the tax there. And we can also see that people didn't like his law on the uh, security cameras, which means he's definitely increasing them. So his popularity is tanking again, but not quite enough yet. Happiness declines in Cuba for obvious reasons, and I think now is the time to begin our first attack. We have almost our full stock of rockets. I th think we can just queue up the next batch of mercenaries anyway. It's going to cost us now 1.6 million, that's fine, we're going to be making a huge profit soon. 
and I'm also increasing the stock of rockets to 2000 at least that's a, the goal for our smugglers right now it's the time for the action comrades uh, wish us luck the problem here now again we have to really think about what we're doing if we launch an attack now on Havana obviously we have no choice we have to launch an attack on Havana uh, no other cities are available at the beginning uh, so that means we attack the city, we're going to overwhelm them with our many fighters, and then we withdraw. I don't think we're going to try and claim Havana, because again, the revolution will end right there, so it's just too, too sudden for me. But if we withdraw our troops, the next time we launch an attack on Havana, for obvious reasons, the government will increase security, so it's going to be a bit more difficult, but again, we'll be hiring more troops in the meantime, so I think it's worth doing. Let's do it. Launch an uprising in a city and enter into a, an armed conflict. An attempt by an underground organization to take control of a city means deploying all its combat troops. You see, that's the thing. All of them, or almost all of them, will be assigned to Havana, which means there's almost nobody to attack Santiago. This poses a very high risk for the organization, as it could be totally wiped out. And that's the thing, I think the more we do this, the more the government will anticipate it and prepare by placing more and more troops in the cities. So we could lead to our def defeat eventually. If the mission is successful, however, the organization can create a front line on the ground, giving it territory for its armies, which can then spread further afield. And, of course, that allows us to buy tanks and things like that. If the capital city is taken, then the organization will also gain control of the country. Now, again, no choice. We have to take Havana for some reason. Confirm. And that's it. Keep it paused. So now the fight begins in Havana on May the 7th of 2019 at just before 9 in the morning. So let's have a look. Right now the balance of power is very much in our favor because we caught them unawares. And that is what's going to change in the future. Next time this bar is not going to be so much in our favor because they will be anticipating us. Uh, if we want to end the fight, we just click here, disperse the fighters and end the clashes in the city. But for now we click here and we enter into the city and we see the map of the uh, various buildings in the city. Now we of course zoom in to see in more detail, but often it's just easier to play zoomed out. So let's go through it very quickly, just again if you're not familiar. So this is the army base, the military headquarters, that will be the most heavily defended. Uh, we get various public squares, this is also where the protests usually happen, like Victory Square, the People's Square, State Square, even though it's a circle. And uh, that's about it. Then we get the buildings, uh, military HQ, you get the police HQ, you get the bank, this is what we want today. You get the museum, this is also what we want today. You get the national parliament or a local parliament. And you get a television building. And of course you get the head of state's residence. Now you see right there, that's the bunker. This is where this bugger is hiding out right now while we're attacking the city. I have made the mistake before of destroying the bunker and then nothing happens. Then you have to withdraw your troops and start again because you have to capture the bunker and the person inside. So obviously don't fire your rockets at that thing. These buildings here are our hideouts. This is, of course, where we were preparing our attack, and this is where we will return to at the end of the attack. Now, we can't leave the city, as I said before. You see the thing is red right there, entrance and way out. And that's because we haven't captured everything in the city yet. But we can't capture everything without capturing the bunker as well, and then we win the revolution, which I don't want to do yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll send our Patriots, our 3,800 soldiers here. Now again, this is where it's very important to note that each unit is actually a stack, not an individual unit. You see, each of these is a stack of 100 soldiers. So uh, we don't want to lose, the, lose them. 
Right, but we're going to have to attack the military base. I want to do that. We're going to have to destroy as many of these tanks and troops. Again, these are stacks of tanks and troops. That's 32 tanks in a stack there. Maybe this is a bad idea. Actually, send them north. We're going to capture the television building because then I can address the public on television. Uh, we're going to send this group of loyal patriots to the south. You see there's the mercenaries in the bottom segment. You will capture the bank and loot it. And you lot will capture the police headquarters. I think. Why not? Right. Slow motion mode. If you click normal speed, everything goes in super speed here. So you don't want to do that. So we get a report here from our secretary. The units have entered the city. This is just if you uh, went in here already. So they'll be mobilizing now. We have to be careful. Let's just have a look at what's happening here. These are actually not tanks. These are rocket launchers. Or are they? I'm still not sure because you see the little rocket icon on the side, but I think it, it's just a generic armored vehicle. I'm not thinking they have so many rocket launchers here. So we can treat them like tanks. They can shell us. You see, well, you don't want to go super speed. Why are you behind? Usually if you move the stack, one of them is left behind to guard the area that you were, but we don't want that right now. Just capture the police HQ and kill everyone inside. It's brutal, I know, but you have to do what you have to do. Also, the tanks can't move into the buildings, but they can, of course, shell them and uh, kill everyone inside. Right, stop. So our patriots are in the bank now and they have looted 226 million bucks for us. You see the this is where the gold and all of that was stored from the government. So we have all our starting money back, basically. Now, do we, I want to fight these people. I can do it. This is where if you didn't have the rockets, you would be in trouble. But we have a, a stock of almost a thousand rockets. So you can think of those as RPGs right here. So I'll click on that and click on the tank. There's three there again. Just keep that in mind. You can easily forget you just see one tank, but there's actually three there. And that has a power of 7,200. I'm not sure if that's the attack. No, it can't be the attack power because we saw previously the freighter also had a 2,000 uh, strength. So I assume this is the hit points. Uh, you can also tell in the little box here there's one star. So that means this is kind of like the lowest tech... Uh, tank there. It's not very uh, high level. Our troops are also one star, so we have to keep that in mind. But together, we have, you see, each stack has 3,000 strength, and they have 7,200 in that one stack. So we're much stronger than them. Launch your rockets, patriots. Hold on. Who Who is doing this now? Come on. Everyone in one direction, please. Not the band. The direction of the compass and this guy is again doing his own thing all right now we're gonna see some action blow this thing sky high comrades there's the RPGs and there it's dead so this is why you have to absolutely have to get rockets before you do an attack right the next bunch will be soldiers so we can just take them normally not full speed, for goodness sake. Get ready, patriots, compañeros. These guys will throw grenades at us. Hold on, what are you doing? You can't just walk past each other. Kill them. There we go. Blood in the streets, yes. We blew up a stack of tanks as well. Again, because each of these is a stack of a hundred troops so there we just lost 13 troops okay just stop you see the bad guys are not doing anything so we have to micromanage a little send them our rockets please 
They're dead. Also, we hurt ourselves, it looks like. Don't want to be too close to this. Right, okay, so apart from losing some of our own men there, that was not a good idea. Men and women, so... Uh, what now? Let's move forward. Let's destroy this. Or should we leave that? No, leave that. I'm not capturing the city now, so don't do that. Back to the police headquarters. Now, we're also in the television building, so uh, this option comes up now for us to appear on television. So I'm going to do that. I'll give the people a rousing speech. Right, also while we're doing this, please capture the museum and loot it. I know it's not very nice, but we have to get money somehow. Also, we've got some traitors coming up here. Kill them. Right, there's the address. I'll just let it play. This is the first time you see me talk in the game. Dear compatriots, I address you from the studios of the main national television network that is now under our control. On the terrain, our insurrection movement is in the process of winning the battle. We are officially calling all live forces and dissenters of this country to join the rebellion in the capital to end the current regime once and for all. So you see the voices don't always match the captions on the bottom, but that's all right. Now again, uh, this is the thing now. We can easily capture that bunker right now and win the rebellion. And I'm probably going to regret not doing that later, but... I think let's let's prolong this a little bit more and just come here for the money and then retreat again and kill as many of these evil uh, Castro enforcers as we can. There's death. There's 90 of them in that stack. And there they go. So 90 people were killed right there on that bridge. Oh man, it's brutal, but that's the way it is. Here's the museum. We can imagine there's lots of Castro statues and whatnot in there. That part, that part they can just destroy. Okay, we've captured it and we've got another 45.2 million dollars from looting the museum and selling the art on the black market. What we also can do, actually, uh, maybe we should do that for just the fun, <laughs> just the fun of it. Let's pull our people back, actually, far enough, and then blow these buildings up, just because. <laughs> oh man, if you can't enjoy it, then why not? Why, why do it in the first place? Let's just get back so we don't hurt ourselves. A little more, comrades. There we go. And then please blow up this thing. I will never bomb. <laughs> this is who is this? Manuel Manuel Chiriques. I don't know this guy. He's the chief of the army of Cuba. He's not our chief of army. That guy was definitely had a different name. This one doesn't like us anyway. Now he's saying he won't blow up his own building, but you see, this is now a bug. Because that's the government's chief of the military, so he's got nothing to do with us. But I guess the reason why that actually happens is because we're in control of the building, so they don't want to blow up our own building, because they think we control that. We can blow up the parliament, though, since we don't control that. Right, slow speed. Let's get our people close to the hideouts again so we can retreat as quickly as possible. Also, if you have a look here, again, this is now for if you're not familiar with the game. If you select them and you click on the action options here, usually I have it set to uh, activate the multi-order mode by default, but I really should turn that off. That just means you can give them multiple orders, but it, it doesn't work very smoothly. Then, of course, you have the option to fire their rockets, if they have them, to patrol, to flee, or to stop. So, of course, that will change depending on the units that you have and their abilities. Right, they're not actually pulling the tanks out here. They're trying to guard the military base. But this is 
especially that stack right there. You, you see that has a strength of 24,000. So that's proper tanks underneath there. Or at least it's just more of them. It's not worth going into battle against that. Not now. If we wanted to capture the city, we have to. But the easiest thing there is just to stand right here and launch your rockets at the building. And when it blows up, it kills all of the units inside. Bit of a shortcut there. So you can click on your hideout and if you have anyone else there you can bring them out as well. No need to do that. Right, in this case I'll go normal speed so they go running Benny Hill style down the street. Okay, you lot get close to the hideout. This makes no difference. If you give the order to withdraw, they just do it instantly. Right, Patriots, please, arm your rockets and blow up the parliament. This should give a good signal to the people that we are coming for them. Now, this should be fun. There should be a few soldiers inside, but they will perish with the rubble. Great Patriots marching forward proudly. Don't stand too close, you'll get hurt. There go the rockets. Yes! Blow it up. And there's the ruins of the National Parliament. So that will give a good signal. Now the whole world will know we're here. Right, stop right there. So we've done everything that we wanted here. Actually now we can also have a look at the actions button. Here you see also what's happening right now. Uh, initiator and so on. Uh, if we click launch an uprising now we get Santiago de Cuba but only that city. Again we should have more options here from the beginning but if I do this now this is also the only time I can do this so maybe I should. Confirm. Right keep it paused so now there's another battle happening one in Havana and the one in Santiago in the south here but you'll see the balance of power again is extremely high because the city was not very well guarded at the beginning. But we only have a few troops here. You see, it's not nearly as many as we had before. And these are all mercenaries. That's only 109 people. But with that 100 fierce and loyal warriors, I can take over the city. So to do this, all we have to do is kill the units here. We don't have to loot the buildings and stuff, but... I'll do that anyway. Now the problem here, well, actually can we bring, no, we can't bring out any other troops from the hideouts. It only works in the capital for some reason. Okay, we don't have to worry about Havana now. Should I withdraw the people from there now? I think so. I don't want to fight two battles at the same time. Okay, we've done everything we wanted in Havana. So disperse the fighters and end the clashes. Go back underground without any repercussions. Confirm. We have no more men on and instantly they disappear. Right, so now we can only focus on the one battle. But still, we won't have our other soldiers, you see? Still, no one else. So this is the only few people that we have. So we have to be very careful now. Right, televised address. So we got 124 new recruits from me speaking on television. So that's a good thing. Free recruits. Battle of Santiago. Just get everyone together before we engage the enemy. So we can fire at once. Right, now they're throwing grenades. Okay. Especially if we're in a cluster, grenades are very bad for us, but it's the only way we can concentrate our fire. Otherwise, the ones in the back won't be shooting. Okay, the national parliament or the regional parliament in Santiago is in our hands. That will also increase our popularity even further. We should still see the popularity increase. No, we actually won't from uh, Havana because we blew up the parliament there. If you capture a parliament, it gives you more popularity. Or I think if you capture the whole city, maybe. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Okay, he's dead. It was just one person trying to be brave. 
is two people and another one you see they're all coming out of the buildings now makes it easier for us grenade now walk right over his corpse and kill the next one Again, that is very hurtful to have us get hit by grenades like that. No choice. There's one stack dead. Okay, we have the city. Actually, now we can't even loot the buildings. We have taken control of the city. There are no more enemy fighters on the streets. This changes the game. We are now a rebel army engaged in war. Okay, so now I think actually we have no choice. We have to fight now. Uh, now this considers us a, an actual army on the map. So uh, we have taken the whole city. Cuban city is totally under our control. Insert name here. And you see, we can't even see the inside anymore. And somehow we're in Ghana. Okay. Right, so now Santiago is ours. So the first free city is now here. The problem is there's an, an army base right next door and an, uh, an air force base right next door as well. And they're already mobilizing 46 tanks. This is a major problem. Now, if you're using uh, fighting wars and so on, you want to go to the military map. Otherwise, you won't see your units. You see, you click there, nothing happens. But if you have the military map, now you can see them. So now, all of our forces are concentrated here, which means we have to win this battle now. I've started the revolution. Uh, so, 11,230 troops or armed extremists. That's our revolutionarios uh, and of course the 23 mercenaries that we had now should we flee or should we fight 32k I think we're gonna have to fight we're gonna have to fight now if we destroy 46 tanks that will be a major blow against the Castro regime so I'm gonna have to go into this city as soon as the battle begins Okay, so it's just saying we're now a full armed military insurgency, no longer moving in the shadows. Now the good thing here is they can't move all their forces in at once. I learned that also with the Afghanistan playing, uh, experimenting there. They'll move them in in stages, so hopefully we can blow them up in stages. There we get some popularity for overthrowing the regime in Santiago. Again, we can't see what's in that military base. Come on. Are you moving in or not? You know what I think? I think we should move some of the people out now. While we can. Not all of them, like a hundred maybe. Just a very small amount of people. Right, so one hundred. And then... Just click move or attack and let's go north. We don't want to go to the sides now. The chances are they'll be instantly killed anyway. Maybe I should only say 10. No, don't do that. Or even just one troop. One. Go to the north. Let's see if one can escape. Because if one can escape, they can build a camp somewhere and then we can move our troops out. Hey, 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 instant kill. All right, this is not good. Now we're trapped in Santiago. And there is something happening in the background. That was from the death there. Right, what are you going to do now? Nothing. You're just sitting there blockading us. Very clever. We might be dead already. I did say we might die by the third episode. Uh, what now? What do we do? Okay, I think the first thing that we do... Let's take it very uh, carefully now. We have 
almost half a billion dollars now that we can invest because of our looting in the two cities. I don't know if they give us the money from Santiago, I doubt that. But uh, anyway, now we can start getting tanks and arm armored trucks and things like that. Tanks rank 1. We can only get from the black market. Let's see if we can get tanks rank 2. We don't have any options for that. And tanks 3 also not. Armored trucks, black market of course. Helicopters rank 1, black market. Nothing for level 2 or 3. So we as the rebels are limited to the most basic equipment or levels at least. Still, it's something. So let's get tanks. It's going to be expensive, but we have no choice. So it costs 4.2 million for one tank. No negotiation allowed here, I think. Now, what are we going to do here? 10 tanks to give us 42 million in cost. But uh, they've got 40 tanks sitting outside. Still, I'm going to do this. If you just say one, they can deliver it quite quickly. You see it's uh, May the 22nd, so in 10 days. But if you say two, it goes to the next month and it just keeps increasing in time. So this is more of a long-term commitment anyway. That's a few months. I'm going to get us 100 million worth of tanks. Let's make it 30 just for the sake of it, since we have 400 and something million dollars now. Get me 30 tanks. Agreement accepted. Uh, get me also armored vehicles, please. The technicals. That's 1.4 million for each. So for a hundred million, we should get quite a lot. Eighty, seventy, seventy-five. All right, seventy-five technicals. That will turn things in our favor, I'm sure. The problem is they might start bombarding the city now. That's the other thing. They're just sitting there very cleverly, but they're not moving anyone into the city, and I can't obviously go into the city now either. Half a million people here, so I'm not sure if they will actually bombard the, the city. They might, but then we'll see the refugees running away. Right, so this is how you lose a revolution in three episodes. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. The battle, the battle. At least that made it into the newspaper. Looting, uh, battle, looting. Retreat and abandon the city. Of course, they'll put that there. Now, what do we do now? Recruit some more people, maybe. Replenish our numbers. Seven million for more mercenaries. We've used about a hundred rockets in that battle, so we're trying to still get the 1,800 there, so I'll just click OK. Should we secure the network further? Let's do that since we now have a presence on the map. You see there, immediately also, we've killed some more of their infiltration we units. So the investments in that securing of the network is actually a very, very important. I'm not going to launch a communication campaign now. We've done that only a few months ago. And, of course, I was on television. And funding infiltration, nothing has happened there, so I'm not going to do that yet. All right, wait, some more stuff is happening. Okay, they're entering into the city. Prepare yourselves, comrades. Now it's battle, battle for the death here. All right, let's see. So these are proper tanks. These are the normal armored vehicles. They're moving three of them in. Brace yourselves, comrades. And then they still have 99 <laughs> outside. I have 99 problems. Pause. Okay, now they're in. Now I can also go in. We're still out. 
outpowering them there, if uh, such a word exists. Right, so three tanks or uh, armored vehicles have now appeared. I think we better blow them up as quickly as we can. So how many people do we have here? Over 600. Move forward immediately. Rockets ready. Fuego! It's the tropical music definitely fits well here. Fuego! We can do it from long range luckily, but so can they. Okay, one battle has been won. Now we wait for them to bring the rest in. Now of course we get kicked out as well. The next batch will be a bit more fierce. You see the splitting into many small groups now. Now we're gonna serial fighting. Oh my goodness, I shouldn't have done this. Ay caramba, where are they going though? There you see the refugees. 277,000 people are fleeing out of the city now. Major humanitarian disaster <laughs> from the fighting, but I don't blame them. Why are you all splitting up like that? You see they're surrounding the city and now they're gonna try and probably enter the city from different angles. Oh yes, or oh, no. They're just driving around here. More popularity again. Now is the time you would build a refugee camp. It takes two weeks to build a refugee camp. Because those people can't go anywhere until the city has been repaired. And now they're just sitting there with 59,000 strength armored vehicles and 32,000 strength tanks. So if we move out, we die instantly. Fun times. That's why we need to wait for the armored vehicles and the tanks now. If we can get those in, we can try and break through. Try and attack them. Well, here we are. And there go the refugees. Where are they going, by the way? just into the wilderness. There's 72 more vehicles. Are those troop vehicles? I think that might be. They're probably gonna try. Okay, get ready comrades. The next wave. And pause. Don't wanna let them run around too much. Okay, they come from the same direction. So yes, that little jeep thing is a troop movement. 72 troops are entering the city. Get them. Get them. Now, of course, this is hurting us each time they do this because we will have losses. Ay caramba, but we're fighting for freedom. Isn't this exciting? They're definitely gonna grenade us. Yep. Uh, get them! Okay, there they go. You see, they die quickly if we can just get close range, but we lost. Can't even see how many. Only a few. Right, next, now we should get more popularity, so then maybe this will work out, but if they somehow get us in one go, we'll all die. I think I'll actually leave off this episode on a high note. There we go, there's our popularity. So comrades, we're surrounded. We are not quite blockaded because we can still get our tanks and uh, armored trucks in here somehow. But we're facing death, death around the corner, comrades. So now we really start with our rebellion. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. This is fun. I hope you're enjoying it as well. And I'll see you next time. Have a fantastic day, comrades. And keep your heads down. There are tanks waiting for us.